accreditation. So hospital accreditation is an action or a process of officially recognizing someone as having a particular status or being qualified to perform a particular activity, for example, accreditation of professionals or institutions. So when you talk about the hospital, a hospital is an institution. So we have to make sure that our services that we provide in the hospital are accredited so that we can be able to provide actually standard services for our clients. If it is professionals, we have to make sure that you are able to actually meet are the requirements of your qualification so that you can be accredited for that qualification of product profession. So that is what accreditation is. So for the case of the hospital accreditation, it's very vital uh, in that it ensures healthcare organizations to meet and maintain specific quality standards. So when we provide these services, we know that we are supposed to give quality services and in that way when we are being accredited it will help us to follow those standards and the guidelines and by doing that we are able also to provide the quality services of standard to our clients so accreditation is very important in improving the quality of services that we provide to our patients in different hospitals so accreditation plays a crucial role in guaranteeing the safety and well-being of patients and promoting excellence. So when uh, our hospitals are created for different services, you realize that they will have to follow those standards that they are recommended for a specific service. And when we follow those standards, we are able to provide effective quality care to our clients. So the importance of this accreditation is basically to help us improve on the quality of services and also to ensure that our patients are safe when we are providing these services on our day-to-day -day operations. Uh, hospital accreditation processes, because you realize that uh, it is a process. So when you're carrying out hospital accreditation, there is a process that you are supposed to follow. And basically, we need to understand that process because you cannot start uh, to offer services and you're not accredited for offering those services and you've not followed the right process. So the hospital accreditation process involves several steps. So it is a step-by-step -step process, uh, starting with preparation and followed by an on-site survey. So you start with uh, first preparing uh, your hospital you have to design uh, to plan and then you have to equip it with different uh, equipments the requirements the staffing then there you can be able to also try to uh, prepare for the accreditation process and they have to come and see what is happening in your hospital they have to come and see uh, how you have organized the hospital, the equipments that you have secured, and the services that you are really intending to provide. So it starts with preparation and then to followed by an on-site survey where they come and see exactly uh, what is happening in your hospital, what you have managed to secure as to uh, ensure that you are able to provide uh, the services. So preparing for accreditation includes developing policies, uh, processes, procedures, and conducting mock surveys to identify areas needing improvement. So when they talk about mock surveys, uh, the mock survey is basically um, an assimilation process of conducting a survey before its actual implementation. So a mock uh, is like you try to simulate uh, the actual process of um, accreditation, what happens during that time before those people come or before the authorities come to inspect the site or the hospital. So you can be able to develop a template that can be designed according to the services that are intended to be assessed for accreditation. Then you take your own uh, survey before they come and you see whether you really need uh, to add other equipments or you need to improve uh, other services the way you have organized them or you need to secure some of the uh, requirements uh, the equipments before these people come in because when they come uh, to 
check the site and they find that you don't have all what is necessary to provide those services you can easily be stopped or they can push you for more other time until you're ready then they come and uh, actually re-survey the hospital and they will either give you the accreditation of offering the services that you intend to offer so mock survey helps you to actually identify and improve where you need to improve before the actual survey comes in. Hospital accreditation criteria, it has a criteria that has to be followed during this process. So accreditation criteria covers various aspects, including infection control, patient rights, and staff qualifications. So during this time and this process, they have to look at uh, the infection control because when you're providing these services, you need to uh, ensure that your patients are safe. You need to ensure that there is uh, infection control and prevention in different uh, hospital spaces where you are providing your services. Uh, for example, in, the, in theaters, we have to make sure that we follow the standards that we are supposed to follow during the construction and the designing of this hospital or this uh, theater. So you have to look at uh, those guidelines, you have to look at those protocols, you have to look at the standard codes so that you can be able to actually construct what is uh, recommended to provide the service uh, in relation to infection control uh, services. Then patient rights, we have also to look at the patient's rights. So uh, the patient has a right uh, in getting the services in a way that uh, when it comes to your hospital, he deserves to be taken care of like any other patient, uh, despite of his uh, age, despite of his uh, status, he has a right to receive the services. So during this process of hospital accreditation, some of these criteria can be looked at. Uh, the patient's rights is very, very important so that everyone is actually uh, provided what is expected to be provided because it is their right. And staff qualifications are very important because you cannot uh, offer services when you don't have qualified staff. So the staffs have to be qualified and they should be having the skills to offer the services that you intend actually to provide in your hospital. So this criteria sets expectations for hospitals to deliver high quality care and maintain patient safety. Uh, some of the documents that can be considered during accreditation are a clear and concise mission statement for the program because if you have decided that you want to offer hospital uh, healthcare services, then you should be having a document that is in relation to the statement of your mission for the intended program that you need to provide. Then also you need to have the goal statements for each major function by which the program intends to attain its mission. How are you going to attain the mission that you need uh, to actually implement in this program? So there should be major objectives that should lead you to the intended mission, including research and services. There are other services that you need to provide like the surgical services, pediatric services, obstetric and gynecological services, and research. So you need really to understand and see how these services are going to be provided, and we need to see those documents on how you have planned. So some of these um, accreditation criteria look at the documents that you have provided on how you are going to implement uh, those various services, the research, and other healthcare services. Then they need also to see a set of measurable objectives and objectives should be measurable in a way that I, they are really um, things that you can obtain or you can attain at a specific period of time in relation to your goals. And the other one is how they are aligned with the mission. So your objectives need to be aligned with the mission of your pro project or your program. So the objectives are always derived from the mission. So the mission gives us the objectives, and that's why uh, this other document or this other criteria on which we uh, do the accreditation is actually explaining and telling us that our objectives should be measurable and they should be able to be aligned with the, um, the mission of your project or your program. 
uh, hospital accreditation uh, indicators. There should be certain indicators that we should look at during the process of hospital accreditation. So accreditation indicators are performance measures that are used to evaluate a hospital's quality of care. So the hospital should provide a quality care to our clients. So we have to have these measurable um, indicators for how it's performing, for how it's actually providing these services. So there are for all hospitals that offer healthcare services are eligible to apply for accreditation. So every hospital that is intended to provide for us the healthcare services has actually to apply for this accreditation so that their services are actually assessed whether they are of good quality to our clients. For example, uh, some of the accreditation indicators are readmission rates. How are your readmission rates? When the readmission rates are very high, then there is something to do with the quality of care that you are providing to your clients. So they will have to look at the readmission rates and see where is their problem. Why is it that the patients that come to this hospital are always coming back in big numbers? So they have to caution the quality of care and can also look at uh, the, the, the qualifications of your professionals who are providing these services. And patient satisfaction scores also is one of the indicators that are looked at as an example of accreditation indicators. So um, when they come to accredit your hospital, they have to look at uh, your patient satisfied. And if the patients are not satisfied, then where is the problem? And in that way, they can also be able to rate your hospital in relation to uh, patient uh, satisfaction scores and compliance with infection control protocols based on the standards of services offered. For example, the standards can be classified in three ways. One of them is critical standards that address laws and regulations. So um, when they are coming to accredit your hospital, they have to look at this. They have to ensure that you are following the laws and the regulations in providing the services. And when you don't have the laws, and services, that means you're going to miss out in your service provision. So some of the indicators that they look at are these are critical standards uh, that address laws and regulations. Those are like uh, the guidelines. They try to look at how are you managing your patients? Are you respecting their dignity? Uh, do they have autonomy or it is just you are deciding for them whatever you're doing to them. So if not followed, can cause harm. It can cause harm to the patients because you don't have the regulations, you don't have the laws that actually guide you in your service provision. So you may end up missing out on how you're handling your patients and therefore you can cause harm to your patients. And then they also need the core standards uh, which address the system. So the core standards basically address the systems and the systems are basically how you are doing uh, your services, how you're offering your services. And we have different uh, systems in the hospital. We have, um, like for example, we talked about the engineering systems and that's why we talked about uh, the electricity. We talked about uh, water and that was in relation to plumbing systems. We talked about um, communication systems. So they have to look at this and see if they are of a standard in order for you to provide a quality services. So accreditation basically is looking at the quality of care that you are providing to your patients. Is it of good standard or it is of low standard? And if it is of good standard, then they can be able to accredit your hospital to provide those services that you're intending. But if it is of low standards or you don't have the quality that they desire for you to actually uh, provide the type of service that you need to provide, then they may not accredit your hospital. So processes and policies uh, then stretch standards that are not easy to meet. So the policies and processes can be some of the standards that are not easily met and can be due to time and resources. So there are some policies and there are some processes that can not be met easily 
when during this time of accreditation and in that way they can either pardon you because it might be due to time but they give you some time so that you can be able to actually acquire them or it can be due to resources and they can facilitate you to provide other services then when you're able to get the processes and the policies to help guide you in this service provision then you can be given a go ahead and your services will be accredited so accreditation is very very important looking at those are uh, different indicators the readmission rates patient satisfaction scores and compliance with infection control protocols is very very key as you provide uh, your healthcare services in your hospital facilities so how do we know that hospital accreditation is actually uh, doing us good in the hospitals that we have accredited so hospital accreditation evidence is very very important so that we can be able to tell that this hospital is providing a quality services so this can be achieved through review and analysis of the impact of hospital accreditation on quality of care so hospitals must provide evidence of compliance with accreditation criteria. So if they don't comply, then there will be no evidence to actually prove that they are actually providing the quality services and accreditation can be withdrawn. So this evidence includes documentation. We need to have documents to show that actually we are providing quality services. We need to have documents to show that we have been accredited to provide a specific service. Then we also need policies, and those policies help to guide us and control uh, the service provision in the hospital. And procedures are also very, very key, as well as patient records and outcomes data. So we need to know the records of our patients, the, the standard and the quality of the records can also prove the evidence of hospital accreditation. What is the quality? of the patient's records that you have in your hospital and what are the outcomes of your data. So the outcome of your data can also give us the evidence of accreditation of your hospital. So accreditation of hospitals mostly impacts on the quality of care as having mentioned uh, through improved quality of management and care in our hospitals. So hospital accreditation is very good in a way that it impacts on the quality of services that we provide to our clients. And in that way, we are able to actually improve on their health and it will increase the number of clients that we receive in our facilities. It also protects us in so many ways, even through the laws, we are protected because we are doing the right thing. But when you don't do the right thing, then you are going to be penalized. And so many times, health workers have been taken to court, health workers have been taken to, to, to be sued, and you're not able to, to actually uh, defend yourself just because you did not have the documents, you are not accredited, and there is nothing to show the quality of care that you provided to your uh, client. So hospital accreditation improvement. So our uh, hospital accreditation improvement uh, is very good in a way that when we do accredit our hospitals, they also help us to improve uh, the quality of the services. So continuous improvement is essential for maintaining accreditation. So when you continue improving the quality of our hospital services, then we are also ensuring that we are really maintaining the accreditation. So improvement uh, in the services we provide will continue to sh show that uh, actually our services were accredited. So when we reduce the improvement of services, in our hospitals then it also affect the accreditation because accreditation is basically the assessment that is done to show that we have the capacity to provide such a specific a service in our hospital so continuous improvement is very very essential for you to maintain the accreditation of the services that you're offering in your hospital so hospitals achieve this through quality improvement teams feedback from surveys and data analysis to identify areas for enhancement. So in our hospitals, we are supposed to have quality improvement teams 
that guide us actually in daily assessment of the kind of services that we offer and they have checklists that help us to assess different services and see whether we are really in the standard that is expected according to the accreditation then also we need to have the feedback uh, from the surveys so the feedback we get from the surveys can also help us to understand whether the services we are providing are still of good quality and in that way hospital accreditation will be improved so continuous improvement is very very important to support hospital accreditation improvement then data analysis to identify areas for enhancement uh, that's why research is very key in most of our hospitals because when you do the research we are able to collect the data and when you get that data we are able to analyze and when you analyze that data it can give us an idea and can give us a direction on where we are moving how our services are provided how many clients are having um are being uh, actually readmitted and what conditions and where is the reason so we shall be able to actually uh, give a good um, um solutions uh, or interventions to actually solve some of these issues and by that we are able to promote hospital accreditation improvement and we shall be able to maintain the accreditation of our hospitals so data analysis is more of research that can help to inform us on what is happening in our hospitals what can be the benefits of hospital accreditation we realize that in everything that you do there are benefits and there can be um, um, challenges so i want us to look at the benefits of hospital accreditation having talked about the indicators having talked about the improvement in service delivery i want us to understand more what could be the other benefits of hospital accreditation so accreditation brings numerous benefits as mentioned below one of them is enhanced patient safety and trust so when our services are accredited uh, they actually help to enhance the patient's safety because uh, when they come to accredit your hospital, they have to look at the infection control measures, they have to look at the patient's safety, and they have to look at the quality of the services that you're offering. So in that way, they are actually enhancing patient safety, and it will also promote the trust that the patients will have towards us and our services. The other point is improved uh, reimbursement rates. So it will help us to improve on our reimbursement rates. So when we do accreditation, people will actually trust us and we shall increase in the rates of our services. We shall increase on the different services that we are offering and we shall increase on the clients and the customers that we are serving. The other uh, the advantage or the benefit is demonstrated a commitment to quality care. So when the hospital is accredited, in most cases, uh, the managers, the organization has to make sure that they put themselves to commit into quality care. Because when you are accredited, that means you are supposed to follow the rules, the regulations, the guidelines, the protocols that are actually related to the services that you are providing so as you do that basically you'll be demonstrating your commitment to quality care and our patients will be receiving a quality as services improvement of the quality of care we shall be able also to improve the quality of care that we are providing to our, our clients when we have a hospital accreditation so in this improvement we are able to actually assess every time we provide a service are we following are the regulations are we following the protocols so we shall be improving day by day on how we provide our services and it is one of the benefits of hospital accreditation it also streamlines operations because we have to follow the processes we have to follow the steps we have to follow the guidelines so when you're doing what is expected you are streamlining 
the operations of the hospital because you have to look at the policies. You cannot do anything without the policies. And if the hospital has been accredited, that means you have the policies that you are following and you have the policies that are guiding every service that is being provided and all the activities and the day-to-day -day running and operation of the hospital. So one of the benefits that is very key is streamlining all the operations of the hospital. Uh, the other is uh, it gives a clear picture of how to constantly improve your organization in years to come. So when you do this, uh, you are going to carry out research, you are going to uh, collect data, and you're going to see how you can be able to improve your services in the future. So this is also one of the good um, benefits of hospital accreditation because you can be able to see what you need to have uh, to improve your service, what you need to actually maybe remove or eliminate in your service delivery because you can be able to tell where you are gaining from, what you are not gaining, and you may be able to actually avoid that and by you doing that in the future you can be able to plan and design your services very well and you will be able to improve on service delivery there are also challenges in hospital accreditation in everything we do uh, there are always challenges just moving forward common challenges in accreditation include resource constraints in everything that you need to do you need to plan for your resources. But resources are never enough, and that's why they say we have to distribute uh, the little resources. So there is uh, a plan to distribute uh, actually the limited resources very carefully so that you may not uh, fail to provide what is expected and what has been accredited. So resource constraints is a challenge and can eliminate you from actually doing your hospital being uh, given hospital accreditation because you're not able to meet the the policies you're not able to meet the guidelines you're not able to meet uh, the necessary resources that are needed for specific services and you may fail to be accredited then complex compliance uh, requirements the number of requirements that are needed for you to be accredited may be so complex in a way that you fail to acquire them and when you fail to acquire them you may not be accredited. So it's also a challenge for some hospitals, especially if you've not planned a well and you do not have enough resources actually to do what you expect and to provide what you have planned for, then you may end up failing to be accredited because uh, there's complexity in complying at the requirements that are needed for you to be accredited. Staff training and education is also a challenge you realize you can have a uh, very uh, specialist uh, services that you need to be provided in your facility or in your hospital, but you may lack the staff that are trained and skilled to provide that service. So staff training and education can also be a challenge for your hospital not to be accredited. So they will look at uh, the kind of staff that you have, their skills, their expertise, and that will determine or it will dictate uh, your hospital accreditation. So this is also one of the challenges and you realize some hospitals fail to provide certain services just because they do not have uh, the staff that is able to, to provide that service and they will fail to be accredited. There can be some success stories of different uh, hospitals uh, that have actually managed to do accreditation and they have testified for the good stories about uh, the benefits and the importance of accreditation. So we can have showcase uh, examples of hospitals that have successful, uh, successful achieved and maintained accreditation and they will tell you the benefits of which they have actually gained are from a uh, hospital accreditation so uh, they can give you examples of certain hospitals especially the government hospitals uh, you can realize like in uganda we have uh, Mulago as our national hospital and they have been accredited to offer several services um, especially for expertise like you you can look at uh, heart institute and the heart institute is more of a uh, 
having the skills and expertise to provide those services. So some of these uh, staffs are actually are trained and they are specialized to offer those services. So these are some of the success stories that some hospitals have actually given us. Then also you need to highlight the positive impact on patient care, reduced adverse events, and increased patient satisfaction. So these are the success stories that most of the hospitals that have successfully uh, gone through the process of accreditation have realized that there is an impact on their patient care, positive impact on their patient care. There's reduced advanced events. Uh, this one looks at more of um, treatment drug administration whereby uh, they really follow the protocols and they have reduced those advanced events due to reaction of patients to either the drugs that have been administered. So when they do accreditation, they are supposed to follow the protocols, they're supposed to follow the policies, they're supposed to follow the guidelines, and in this way, you shall be able to reduce advanced events on your clients. And also it has increased patient satisfaction. So when you follow those guidelines, you follow the protocols, uh, during that process of accreditation, you need to have those protocols, you need to see to have those guidelines. And when you implement them, you're able to meet uh, your patient's needs and your patients will be satisfied with your services. So those are some of the successful stories that we have always heard from our patients and from the hospitals that have uh, successfully uh, been accredited. So accreditation and patient-centered care you can be able to explain how accreditation aligns with patient-centered care. And you should give an emphasis on the importance of involving patients in decision-making and care planning. So uh, when you are being accredited, you don't just look at offering the service, but accreditation will look at the patient-centered care. And in patient-centered care, it has actually to provide services which are individualized to a specific patient and you have to accept that even a patient has a right to make a decision on any kind of plan and any kind of care that you are providing to them. So accreditation and patient-centered care is very key. So as you continue looking for accreditation, you have to focus and see the services that I'm offering. Am I looking at patient-centered care or I'm not? And if you're not, then what should we do? so that we can be able to meet our patients' needs and improve on the service delivery. So accreditation and quality improvement, uh, when you look at accreditation, accreditation helps us to improve the quality of services that we offer because of following those guidelines, following those protocols, and also looking at the policies. So accreditation serves as a driver for quality improvement initiatives so when you look at accreditation, it helps us to improve the quality as we follow the protocols that have been put in place for the different uh, services that we are providing to our patients. So we also need to know the examples of successful uh, quality improvement projects that actually originated from accreditation. So there are some projects that may have originated due to accreditation. And we very well talked about our uh, accreditation being a way of uh, improving the quality of services and is a way in which people try to follow uh, the policies, the guidelines and so forth. So we also have to collect our patients' data. We also analyze the data and we have to see the outcome of our data and we need to assess our patient satisfaction. And as we are doing this, we shall be able to improve some of the projects in our hospitals. One of them can be reduced uh, drug uh, like reactions to our patients because we are following protocols when we are giving the services. One of them can be improved data analysis or improved the patient's data because we are using the electronics to help us actually collect the data of our patients. So there are so many successful stories and there are so many ways in which we can improve the quality of care to our patients and the examples of those successful quality improvement projects can help us improve actually the quality of care that we give to our patients. So I want to say that 
uh, when you look at um, accreditation and quality improvement, it's more of um, improving the services. And when you have these projects, they help us to identify the issue. And when we identify the issue, it will lead us to plan on how we are able to actually improve and correct the problem in our hospitals. So when you do this uh, hand in hand, you are able actually to provide uh, the services that are needed for your patients. So even uh, another project can be a reduced uh, patient's readmission. So when you have accreditation and you're looking at quality improvement, then you shall be able to reduce uh, the patient admissions in your hospital. So accreditation and quality improvement move hand in hand and they support each other. And in that way, we are able actually to improve uh, the services. I want to get back to uh, this slide of accreditation and patient-centered care. Looking at um, the patient-centered care and uh, especially the, on the emphasis of the importance of involving patients in decision-making and care planning. Um, you have to focus on dignity and respect of your patients. And when you do that, then you're able to actually focus on patient-centered care. Because you have to look at your patient's dignity, you have to respect your patients. And when you're doing this, you have to look at the, their values, their beliefs, and also their cultural backgrounds. So when the patient comes to you, you have to look at this patient as an individual and handle this patient as an individual, not as a group. So you have to focus on this patient's values. You have to look at this patient's beliefs and also look at the cultural background of this patient to avoid the conflict in your service provision. Also still in accreditation and patient-centered care. Another point is about information sharing. You have to share all the information that you have with your patient. And you have to also encourage your patient to share their perspectives and their questions so that you can be able to provide for them uh, the exact uh, need uh, of the service that they require. So when you look at a patient-centered care, it doesn't look at anything, but it focuses on a patient as an individual. So you need not to keep quiet and yet you know that the information you're having can help your patient and you need not to leave your patient quiet and yet you have not collected actually enough information to inform you on how you're going to handle this patient. So in Information sharing is very key that the patient should be encouraged to speak out. Well, no, the patient has to participate and the family has to participate. So you need to involve the family and the patient in the care that you are providing. And when you are doing this, it's actually giving support both to you and the patient. So you have to make sure that they participate in decision making and in the planning of the care that you are providing to the patient. And lastly, continuity of service provision. So providing care across the continent is very, very important for our patients. So you should design your systems uh, to provide actually and promote the services that can transition not only in the hospital, can, but you can also be able to provide some of the services from home. So that's what this point means. Continuity of services, whether the patient is at home, you can be able to know what your patient needs uh, to do to support his health or else to promote his healing when even he's at home. Then also you need to actually understand the basis of patient-centered care in relation to the services that you are providing. Basically, that's what we needed to understand this evening. And that was our topic for today. Any questions are welcome for those who have logged in. And I think we shall continue from here next time. I wish you a blessed evening. And thank you for being there. And thank you for logging in. Bye-bye.